here we are with our final video of uh, the urinary system module 15 and uh, this is part four I'm outside because my wife and baby are watching Aladdin and I just I simply can't focus when things are um, happening but it looks like it's gonna storm pretty soon so we might have to pause the video at some point but hopefully it's not gonna take too long uh, we only have four slides to talk about today, the first of which deals with ammonia. You see, ammonia is NH3, and amine is NH2. <clears throat> when the amines are removed, it naturally is going to pick up another hydrogen. There are hydrogen ions floating all throughout the cell that the amine is just going to pick up, and it creates ammonia. Ammonia, not so good. Ammonia is a uh, cleaning agent. And uh, it's very useful as like a glass cleaner because it evaporates very quickly. It has a really pungent smell. And I just don't like its smell at all. It's also pretty toxic. And it's water soluble. Uh, it makes it not so good. Um, however, the liver fortunately turns ammonia into urea, which is le less toxic and less soluble. Urea is still not good for your body. Urea is one of the main components in sweat and in urine. And so if um, the concentration of urea in your body is high, you have typically dark yellow uh, urine. Not so good. It means that you're probably dehydrated <clears throat> and possibly that you're eating some things you ought not to. Um, be careful uh, when you're thinking about a high-protein diet. Sorry, keto. Um, as I stare at the Moors house, I know that the, the Moors have been on keto, and it's worked great for them. I mean, absolutely wonderful. Um, but there are some side effects to that, some unintended ones, too. Uh, you do eat a whole lot of amines when you are um, on keto, producing a whole lot of ammonia, a whole lot of urea. Um, and it could be kind of toxic to your body, and a lot of bodies respond pretty poorly to the high-fat, high-protein diet simply because of the fact that those who eat a, a lot of protein produce a lot of amines, which produce a lot of ammonia, could upset your, um, could, could upset your body, could cause some liver issues, sometimes keto does, um, and uh, even sometimes some kidney um, issues, a lot of kidney stones happen. And uh, that's just simply because of the diet. And there's no, of course, perfect um, diet, but a, f but, but a fad diet you really do have to watch out for because you're eating high concentrations of a certain kind of thing. And sometimes it works, um, but a lot of times it causes some unintended side effects. Uh, regulating water. Antidiuretic hormone, also known as ADH or vasopressin, is part of a negative feedback system that regulates water. ADH increases permeability within the kidneys, allowing greater water recovery. In kidneys, it's natural for sodium to be recovered and potassium to be pumped out. What's the problem with this? Well, there would be no problem 500 years ago or 1,000 years ago or 1,500 years ago when salt was so rare it was used as currency. Uh, we live in 2020. Most of the time, our diets look like what's on that picture. Pizza, crazy high sodium. Um, you have chips, very high sodium. Uh, bread, <laughs> tons of sodium. That burger, too. Oh, whoa, whoa. I got a wasp attacking me. <laughs> Weird. Anyway, um, unusual. Anyway, I guess I'll just stand. Um, anyway, sodium uh, is naturally recovered. And so if you eat a lot of high salty foods, a lot of processed foods, um, you're going to be retaining a lot more salt than you actually need. And the potassium, which is actually a more rare thing, usually found in like fruits such as bananas, you know, if you were, of course, living hundreds of years ago or even a couple thousand years ago, your diet would probably be made of a lot of game and a lot of, of fruit and vegetables that are naturally found and picked. Um, and so eating a natural diet 
you know, it makes sense biologically. Hey, you, you keep the stuff you don't have, like sodium, and you throw away the stuff you do have, like potassium. But the reality is, is our diets are no longer like that. We eat a lot of processed foods, low in potassium, high in sodium, and it really does the opposite of what we need it to. And uh, so it would be beneficial to go back towards a less salty and uh, more potassium-filled diet. It is more natural, so to speak, for our bodies to uh, deal with low sodium and high potassium than high, high sodium and low potassium as our diets today. I would encourage you to take a look at the back of the food label. Some of these things are crazy. I was looking at Chili's Baby Back Ribs. I think they had 12,000 milligrams of sodium. The average human body needs about 2,000 a day. And it really needs less. It needs about 500. That's, that's a lot, just for some ribs. Um... Here is a model heat loss. Um, heat causes water loss and dehydration. <clears throat> Receptors in the hypothalamus detect low water content. Um, pituitary says, hey, we got to make some ADH. Um, ADH uh, allows water to be recollected, reabsorbed. Uh, water's retained. Uh, urine is more concentrated. Oh, it's starting to rain. I'm going to have to pause my video here. All right, I'm back inside. The movie's paused, so I'm, I'm going to go pretty quickly. Um, and this is our last slide. And these are just some thinking questions, things to ponder. How do, um, how do certain things that we eat or do affect our bodies? Consider um, the following two illustrations. Caffeine and alcohol are diuretics. Uh, they stop... ADH release. Now remember, again, ADH, last slide, allows your body to get water back. If your body doesn't take any water into its system, um, then uh, the inhibiting of ADH lowers the water content of blood. And obviously, um, a Christian shouldn't be intoxicated, um, but if someone has like a hangover, um, it's caused in large part actually by water loss instead of actually the alcohol. And if you or your um, parents drink coffee instead of water in the morning, they're actually lowering their uh, the content of their volume of water in the blood significantly. That's not good for you. And um, my wife's laughing because she drinks coffee every single morning. Um, but we got to be careful with, with things which cause ch chemical changes to the body, such as diuretics. Um, here's another one. And, uh, and this, is, this, is, this is where the, where the good stuff comes in. I wish Ruth Ann could see this because she knows how much I like uh, pyramid schemes. But <laughs> anyway, many over-the-counter... And particularly, um, multi-level marketing systems claim to detoxify the body. Many of these contain dandelion leaves, parsley, other herbs and leaves, um, which are known diuretics. If a person tries these products and loses weight, what is actually lost? Well, if these products are preventing the body from retaining water, and you use them for a couple days, um, you actually will lose five, six, seven pounds. And you're like, wow, well, I'm, I'm doing pretty good on this, on this weight loss program. But the reality is you lost all water, all water weight. And when the body's about 70% water and you've lowered that artificially to 65, 64, 63%, um, you could experience some pretty, uh, severe health issues. And it, it brought up a, uh, kind of a funny idea. Um, I had a lot of friends when I lived in Pennsylvania. They were all into this, it works. It doesn't. <laughs> um, and here is the ingredients in it works wraps, something that's supposed to cause more weight loss than any other treatment on the market. 
but take a look. Here are some of the top ingredients. Chestnut leaf extract. Um, I can't even pronounce that leaf extract. Green tea leaf extract. Ivy leaf extract. Horsetail leaf extract. It has leaf extract from Butcher's Broom, Guanara, jo Joba, uh, about a thousand different teas, rosemary, eucalyptus, all these different, um, all these different leaves and diuretics. And so the reality is, is that um, in a lot of these products, you're you're not causing permanent weight loss, you're only depriving your body of water, and you're thinking that you're doing great and that it's working. And so be very careful with, with fad herbal things, um, especially things which say detoxify, because really, um, if you think about that word detoxify, um, detoxify means to remove a toxin. That's the purpose of your liver and kidney. <laughs> and um, since you probably have a functional liver and kidney, you don't need to detoxify your body. Let your body detoxify itself for you. And a lot of times these um, these diets, which are just, you know, oh, drink this weird tea, um, it's not detoxifying, it's just removing water. And that's not a good thing. Well, anyway, that is the end of chapter 15 and the end of this slideshow. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation of the urinary system. You have some questions to get done, please do those in a timely manner and get those in. Your test, of course, is going to be um, next week. So uh, it should be on either Monday or Tuesday. I don't remember exactly where it is on the lesson plan. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.